Welcome back, everybody, to the wonderful world of Hinamizawa, the village that makes me want to cry in a corner. Last time, we made our way to school with Rena and Mion after Mion put a needle in our food, or potentially Rena. Not not sure which, but either way, his last recording session was something. I will say that much. But before we actually get into today's content, I want to let everyone know that we are going forward with the tea party idea. Basically, I want to meet a middle ground with the people that wanted an analytical Let's Play and myself that wanted to just recreate the first Let's Play but give it an updated uh, sort of commentary and keep the Let's Play spoiler free. This is sort of a way to appease both sides. I don't think I can do an entire analytical Let's Play because I find that I would probably run out of material by the end of Chapter 2. And people do want to see an analytical viewpoint from myself and what my thoughts are on Higurashi when they cry. So I think dedicating a 20 or 30 minute video at the end of each chapter will probably be the best outcome for both parties involved. Um, I haven't decided how I'm going to do those, whether I'm talking over a blank screen, the, uh, the thumbnail for each video, or quite simply editing together vi various videos from the Let's Play that just happened, I don't know. But we're, we're going to be doing the uh, Tea Party idea going forward. But with that being said, let's go ahead and delve into the wonderful world of Higurashi When They Cry How, the world where... Apparently my friends are literally trying to kill me by making me swallow a fucking needle. Let's get into it. I mean, like, that... I want to believe that our friends are actually, like, not trying to kill me. But I almost swallowed a needle. Like, you don't, you don't just put a needle in food, like, come on. Calling it a warning was just my habit of understanding things. I mean, I want to believe our friends are not trying to kill us, but look at the facts. I mean, Satoshi outright disappeared last year. Who's not to say that he found out something? That he was similar to us. Maybe he learned about the last three or so years of uh, deaths that have been happening, the curse of Oishiro. Maybe he found out something that he shouldn't have. And because of that, he, he transferred or disappeared or whatever. I mean, I cannot lie, our friends have been doing some shady things. Like, really shady things. answer should be obvious. Unfortunately, as much as we like our friends, and as much as we've had fun with them, we cannot deny the fact that at the very, very least, both Rena and Mion acting strangely points to them trying to kill us. I mean... There's there's misunderstanding, and then there's this. Rena corrected us for lying, even though they themselves have lied. Mion asking him about what's for lunch. That's that's all one thing. But Rena eavesdropping outside of our door for an hour, and then Mion and or Rena with the needle in our food. You cannot get past that. 
Not only that, but we do know Rena's past. I really hope no one else heard that. If they did, we're kind of just screwed. You can deny it all you want, but, I mean, eventually you have to come to terms, KG. I've already come to terms. Like, there was a fucking sewing needle in your food. What what else is it going to take? The fucking axe? Do you need them to come at you with weapons for you to realize, Oh shit, they're trying to murder me. They put a needle in your food. They eavesdropped on a conversation you had with a police officer. They know where you are at all times. They're recording where you are. They're documenting it. They're trying to figure out where you are likely to be. And when you break the norm, they ask questions to try and figure out what made you want to go there. It, it's, it's as simple as that. Like, there's nothing else, there's nothing else that I can think. I almost screwed up my words. I want to believe that our friends are not trying to kill us, but given all the facts that we're seeing, the writing is just outright on the wall. Holy shit, the class is already over. Didn't we just get here? Damn, we've been deep in thought this entire time. I... The worst part is, I feel bad for Satoko and Rika. Because... I don't think that they're in on this. I do not for a... for a... millisecond... believe that Rika and Rena have anything to do with this. They have not shown themselves to be ag... uh... Shit, I can't talk. They are not showing themselves to be antagonistic towards me. They don't have their own weird, creepy expressions. For all I know, they're just two kids that just happen to become friends with two really fucked up people. I mean, it, it really hurts not to do the club activity. Trust me, this is coming from someone who enjoyed Yumineko for some of the smaller things before the murders actually happened. I mean, don't get me wrong, when bad things happen, that's also entertaining, but, I mean, this... This is just us dying. It, it, it is chapter one, to be fair. Just like Yumineko, it is chapter one, but even still... No, Rena. I I don't think I don't think you're gonna need to be coming with us. We we can we can get home by ourselves. Just we need we need to be left alone. On, I have my own deduction game going on. It's called Survival. Like... I, like, this is just survival by this point.
Oh, it it hurts. It really hurts to leave. It really hurts to leave, especially Rika and Satoko. They're probably not even in on this. We gotta harden the heart. If we don't, we'll let ourselves fall victim just like Sato she did. We'll be erased. They can say that he transferred, but Oishi told us the truth. He disappeared. Maybe at one point they were. Maybe they still are, Keiichi. I, I can't really say. But by this point, they're trying to kill us. We can try and be as naive as we want, but we have to face the facts before the facts face us. This is a harsh curse, like holy crap. And the problem is, I don't know where it all started. When did it get so wrong? <laughs> Seriously, give us a break. Now the world just tastes gray to us. Now all we see is gray. Huh. I guess in some way I finally understood what Shannon and Cannon were talking about. Sounds like they're talking about business by this point. Nothing that we really need to concern ourselves with. I wouldn't call the food disgusting. Your mom made that for you. Or your dad. He is sitting at the dinner table. I feel like you can at least depend on your parents. Like, maybe you should talk to them about this. I mean, you are a kid after all. Maybe talking to your parents can actually help. Talk to them about what's going on. Talk to them about the needle that happened. Talk to them about what you feel like's gonna happen. If you don't talk to your parents, you never know. Would they understand? Yeah, if, if we told them about Rena, would they believe us? My high-strung mom will probably drag me off to a psychiatrist at this point. That's true. If everything is as it is, then they could be victims as well. 
Considering past victims were married couples, I mean... We... We can't let them know. I know that... I, I Now that I'm an adult, I know that telling your parents is probably a better alternative, but... With the actual threat of murder going on, I don't want to put their uh, his parents into that situation. As long as, I'm, as long as my parents didn't know anything, nothing would happen to them. As long as my parents were here, this house would be a safe haven for them. It was only safer than outside. She really is the only person we can trust at this point. The weird, creepy guy that invited kids to his car with air conditioning and only then afterwards told them that he was a police officer. I mean, holy crap, that still irks me that Keiichi got in the car. This was back before bad things happened. definitely probably going to be hard. The timing to bring Oishi in would be very difficult. Yeah, he's in a city, not Hinamizawa. So even if we phoned him in the moment of need, it would take him like 30 minutes to reach. So we have to survive for like 30 minutes in a village that these two know very well. not reassuring in combat. It's it's also recognized as a weapon. It's surprising how Rena can walk around with an axe, but that's that's me, not her. A metal bat. All right. That that is inconspicuous. Many teenage boys tend to be playing sports very realistic viewpoint right there. You just need to get there to school early enough to conceal it and uh, secure it. That is true. That is the one thing I, I didn't even think of was leaving behind incriminating evidence. If we put in some evidence and write out a piece of paper of what's going on, then at the very least, if we get screwed over, the bad guys will get screwed over too. <laughs> I mean, when you write something like that down, you have to take a step back and just laugh a bit before actually getting do, uh, getting into it. But uh, we're going to leave Keiji to his writing. In the next episode, we're going to continue on. So 
My name's One Crazy Fox One. This has been Higurashi When They Cry. Hal, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Tell them, guys, tell them. See you then.